Hi everyone, welcome to Mindful Crafts and More. I'm Katrina. If this is your first time visiting my channel, welcome. I hope you see something that you like and consider subscribing. If you are returning, welcome back. I really appreciate you for hanging out with me for a bit. So today I am going to show you my completed project that I have done using the Darn Good Yarn Advent Calendar. Uh, I chose a mystery project and I had someone to help me out by choosing it. And tonight I'll reveal the um, name of the pattern, the designer, and the finished product. So first, I'm going to show you where I was at the last video. So what do you think, guys? Working with the Darn Good Yarn um, was great. The cotton yarn, it uh, was gliding through my fingers well. I didn't get a lot of resistance. I really didn't find any major imperfections in the yarn as I was using it at all. It was easy to frog as I did make a few mistakes as I was going along with the mystery project and realized it after I had done a few rounds and had to uh, redo them, but I didn't have any problems with frogging the yarn, um, taking it loose and then redoing it. It didn't you know, damage the yarn or change the yarn in any way. And uh, so I really did have a good time uh, with it. Um, also, I pretty much had enough to complete the project, but I will talk about that when I actually show you the finished product. So I just wanted to kind of give that intro and we'll talk a little bit and then I'll come back and I will show you my finished project. All right. So the other thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about is the, the difference between a doily and a mandala. All right. So um, when does a doily become a mandala or are they the same thing? What do you guys think? Have you ever made a doily? Have you ever made a mandala with yarn? Have you ever uh, perhaps uh, done a color by number mandala or painted a mandala? I know many of us have used the yarn that is called mandala, which is a lion brand um, product, but mandalas actually do exist outside of the type of yarn and you can actually make them with yarn or other types of media. So today I wanna to talk a little bit about mandalas and doilies, okay? So I did a little bit of research to try to find out what the difference was or if there was a difference at all, just so that I would kind of understand. So I'm just gonna share the information that I found with you guys, okay? All right, so first of all, the question is, what is a mandala and what is a doily and what are the differences? Well, so first of all, what is a doily? A doily is described as an ornamental mat and it uh, was named um, by a 17th century draper in London and it's the fabric that's made um, with either lace or uh, very thin um, threads or things like that, okay? So that's what a doily is. A mandala, on the other hand, can be made out of quite a few different things. It can be fabric or it can be made out of some other type of uh, media. But for today, we're just gonna stick with the things that are made with either threads or yarns, all right? So now, looking at that, now that I got kind of a general description of it, then I wanted to go a little bit further to see if I could figure out exactly what the differences are and to see if they're really the same. Are these two terms interchangeable? Well, a doily usually can be made of different shapes. You can make it into a lot of different shapes. It can be a circle, it can be a square, it could be a triangle, it could be an oval, it could be a rectangle any kind of shape you desire for a doily. Um, there, you're not really limited to the shape of it. A mandala, on the other hand, in general, is 
a circular shape and it has symmetry. Okay, so that's the difference, one difference between the two of them. The next thing is the doily usually is um, something that's made using very thin, fine thread um, to create it. Whereas a mandala is usually using a thicker um, yarn or a cord-like um, yarn um, to, to create it. So it's a lot thicker, okay? Um, doilies are thin, they're dainty, they're lacy. Mandalas are thicker, they're more solid. Okay, not necessarily lacy. There can be some openness to them, but for the most part, they're a lot more solid when they are made and constructed. For doilies, the threads that are used can be anywhere from a category 40, 30, 20, 10, 5, or 3. And when we talk about thread size, the smaller the number of the thread, the thicker it is. So that 40 or 30 or 20 are very, very thin, fine th um, threads, whereas a three is a lot thicker. So what I did was I got a card to kind of show you some of the ones that I have. So I have a lot of crochet thread here in my basket, all right? And these are all different um, thicknesses. Many of them are 10 um, that I use for my doilies and whatnot. But I did this card here so that you could kind of see. All right. So if you see here, this one here is a worsted weight cotton. And you see how thick that is versus this red one here is a, um, a five. And this one is a 10. So this is a a three, this one is a five, and this one is a 10, okay? So that's the difference between, um, between all of these, all right? So just to try to show you the differences between them, okay? So this is um, thin, this is thicker, and this is thicker, okay? So this is a 10, a five, and a three. So the smaller it gets, the thicker it gets. The larger the number, the thinner it gets when it comes to thread. Now, yarns on the other hand are what we would probably use to make a mandala, um, which you could use a thread, but it would probably be the thicker thread. So here's another card where I show, this one is a three, and this three could translate to a thread or it could translate to a yarn, all right? And um, so this would be a light, weight yarn or like a sport weight size. And then this one is more like a worsted uh, weight, which is our four ply, okay? So that's the difference between them. And then I'll put them side by side so that you can kind of see, all right? I hope that helps guys. All right, so now for doilies, usually we put them on flat surfaces like tables or maybe the back of a sofa or the arm of a chair or something like that. Um, for mandalas, many times those are upright. So those can be like wall hangings and whatnot. Um, mandalas can also uh, maybe be floor coverings. And usually they're a lot thicker to be able to withstand the wear and tear that uh, it would endure by um, being a floor covering. Um, usually a doily is more of a 2D structure versus a mandala being more of a 3D structure where you have uh, surface crochet stitches to kind of um, really bring out the different colors and interweave the uh, different colors of the yarn. Um, most of the doilies are one or two colors, but I have seen some that are multiple colors too and still considered a doily and not a mandala. Um, um, but, you know, um, the size and shape and overall look of the doilies can vary quite a bit in terms of the colors and whatnot versus the mandala, which is usually very bright colors and you have a lot of change um, in those colors throughout the entire uh, piece that 
um, you have um, created. And for mandalas in general, the design is a symmetric design um, versus a, uh, a doily, which sometimes is not necessarily a symmetric design. So those are the few things that I found out about it. Now I'm gonna show you a few things that I have made and then see if maybe you can figure out whether you would consider it to be a doily or a mandala, okay? So let's see. So here's one right here. And yes, this was used make, making, um, I made this using a thicker um, crochet um, cotton thread, but I would say to me, this is considered a doily, all right? Um, because I it's monochrome, so it's one color. And yes, I use different stitches and whatnot, and it is symmetric, um, but it's still very drapey and it's not very thick and there's no surface um, crochet um, things there. So I would consider this to be a doily. What do you guys think? All right, next. Is this, okay? So this I made using a worsted weight, okay? And I wanted it to go on my table and I kind of call it a mat, but it's actually a doily. And the same thing goes, it's very lacy. Um, and even though it's not as thin and I used a worsted weight, it's still, you know, very, very lacy, one color, um, open stitches, no surface um, stitches at all. So I would consider this to be a doily. Now I like this one. So I actually did it again in a different color. All right. And so same thing goes here. Really considered a doily. Very, very pretty. I really do like it, but not a mandala, right? Okay. One more. Okay. So what about this one, guys? What would you say for this one? Okay. So this one is multiple colors. Um, it does have some surface crochet, but it's using a very thin yarn, okay? And not necessarily something that you would put up on a wall unless you enclose it in maybe um, some glass in a frame, okay? So I would consider this also to be a doily. By the way, this is a Circle of Friends um, doily and I will put the um, designer's name and everything in the description box. Um, as I am filming it, I, the name escapes me, but I will put it in the description box. This one was a really, really fun, uh, fun project to make. All right. And then the other two that I just showed the two larger ones, those were, um, patterns that were, uh, the, the visual. So it gave you sort of a picture pattern to follow. And if I can find the name of the designer, again, I will place it in there. So I just took it, it was supposed to be a smaller um, project. And I just, instead of using the thread, I used the worsted weight in order to, to get it. And then again, the very first one that I showed, this one also, um, that one I found, and it was uh, not a, it wasn't a written pattern. It was a like a graph or a picture that I had to follow. So I'll put all the information in the description box. So that in case you guys would like to make any of these, you will um, be able to make them. Okay, so I hope that helps. All the ones so far that I have shown you are considered to be doilies. So I haven't shown you a mandala yet. Why would I talk about this if I wasn't going to show you a mandala? Well, this is the reason, guys. I'm going to show you my finished product uh, from the Darn Good Yarn um, Advent Calendar, which I called a mystery project. So let me tell you a little bit about the designer first. So the designer's name is Karen 
Verquest. And she is a Swedish designer and she's on Ravelry. She made this particular pattern that I followed back in 2016 and did a mystery crochet along for people who were interested. And so I asked someone if they could help me to find a pattern that would use multiple colors of yarn and make it fun for me. And so they found this pattern for me and just gave me the directions without the picture. So I was able to just follow the directions and then um, come up with this finished product. And so the name of the pattern is Mystery Mandala. Okay, so that's why I showed you all the other ones. Now, hopefully, as I show you my project, you will be able to see the differences between the things I just showed you and the mystery project. So are you ready, guys? I hope you are. So this is my mystery mandala project. It is all done. And I think it just came out so beautiful. All right. So it has a lot of um, stitches that are surface stitches, if you can see that. And when you look at a mandala, unlike a doily, it looks different on one side versus the other. So what I'll do is I'll show you this side. And if you look closely at these different stitches, and now I turn it on the back, you can see that it does look different. And that's because of the surface stitches that you do. When you do those surface stitches, part of the stitch is only going to show on one side versus the other. But I am just so happy with the way this turned out. And I think it is just so beautiful. It was really fun. And I hope you guys enjoyed my journey as I worked on this mystery mandala project. All right. So that's actually all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the project as I worked on it. And I hope the information that I provided to you was helpful. Oh, you know what? I just forgot one thing. I wanted to show you what I had remaining in my yarn. Okay. All right. So I used the first six colors in the Darn Good Yarn Advent Calendar. All right. So the first color was white. I used up all the white. The next color was green, and this is what I have remaining. This is it, okay? The next color was purple, and this is what I have remaining. The next color was blue. I have this much remaining. Uh, the next color was pink. I used up all my pink. And the next color was red. And this is what I have remaining. So I, I did run out of just a little bit of it. And I had to add um, other yarns to make up for it. But it wasn't too bad. The yarns that I used to make up for it um, one of them for the white, I used Patton's Grace, which is a, um, fine, it's a light, um, three cotton. And then for the pink, when I ran out of the pink, I used a craft, um, I used a craft yarn. And I just put two together because it wasn't thick enough. And so I had to take and use two strands of um, this together. And this um, craft um, thread is used to make like friendship bracelets and things like that. All right. Um, and then let's see. I ran out of, so I ran out of white. I ran out of pink. 
And then I think there was one other color that I ran out of. And that was it, guys. It worked out really good, okay? And I'm really happy um, with my finished product. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you guys later, very soon. And I wish each and every one of you guys a happy holiday season. Please stay safe and be well. Bye-bye.